Kind of busy. Summer vacation at last. No more tedious assignments in classes to teach me stuff that I'll never end up using later in life. It's just time to unwind and relax. And it is during this time of year that I tend to end up feeling the most nostalgic for my childhood. And one of the many things I like doing indoors at the time was playing free quality flash games online. But the first site that I got around to using was CartoonNetwork.com around maybe 2004. Now the website from around that time to around 2006 holds a special place in my heart as it was a place that I spent a lot of time on. For this specific video, I want to talk about a select few games that I played a lot during that time. So it's not a retrospective on the site as a whole during the CN City era. Not counting Let's Plays, I didn't see anyone making a video talking about these specific games, so I figured why not put my own spin on them. What did I think of them as a kid? How do they hold up? And other stuff like that. Check out CartoonNetwork.com. The click is our command. Should I like, reboot or something? The first set of games that I want to talk about are from Camp Laszlo, the show no one but me cares about. The first game to discuss is Splatoon, Paint Can't Panic. Basically, you just run around and cover the whole place in paint until you meet a certain percentage. The game itself controls pretty smoothly and isn't too difficult until like the last level or two when you pretty much have to cover the whole level with paint without getting hit once. The next is Totem Stole, which has two segments. The first is an escort mission where you have to protect Raj and Clam. And the second part is a Sly Cooper S stealth based mission where you have to steal back the totem pole while avoiding guards, alarms, and spotlights. The second half is personally my favorite of the two, mainly because of its nice atmosphere and just my own personal preference for stealth based gameplay. Also, I like to mention that this game is no longer available on the American version of Cartoon Network's website, but it is found on the Asian version of the site for some weird reason. The last of the Camp Lazo games I want to talk about is Scrolled Away, which, as a kid, is the one I played the most out of the bunch. This one is definitely the hardest, as for all three sections, you have to avoid taking too much damage or else you'll lose and start all the way at the beginning. And there's a lot to dodge, so expect to lose a few times when playing it. There's honestly not a lot to say about it, even though I remember being really into it as a kid, except that it's still pretty fun to play, I guess. So overall, the games for the show are pretty okay. Nothing special. And now we move on to another show that is based around summer, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. The worst thing about this show is that despite it being my favorite of the bunch we're going to talk about here, it actually is the one I spent the least amount of time playing the games for it. First came up is Lunchroom Rumble, which at this point is most infamous for having a shot of Double D taking off his hat and revealing that... That's it? Contrary to popular belief, however, this isn't canon as the studio that animated Ed, Ed, and Eddie, aka Studios, didn't have any involvement with it. Anyway, the game is a pretty standard food fight war of hit your opponents, avoid taking damage, and yada yada yada. You do have the option of gaining power-ups that only have a slightly higher damage level that requires you to also be really close for it to work, and even then, it is possible for them to block it, so honestly, the special moves are really pointless except for briefly stunning your opponents. You start off with the Eds, but as you progress, you can also unlock more characters with their own weird power up so that's also pretty nice. Next game is called Sack Smash, which is a demolition derby that functions very similarly gameplay-wise to Lunchroom Rumble, except with cars. I personally like this one better. I especially like the ability to upgrade your ride and even give it any name you want, as long as it's not too long. It was apparently popular enough to get a sequel which I somehow, after all these years, never knew even existed until revisiting the site. The sequel adds some new things like new environments, including the school from the later seasons and the ability to use power-ups, which, unlike Flanks from Rumble, are actually useful. The last game here is the Untouchables, which is named after the first episode of the series, even though the overall setting of the game is clearly based around the Junkyard episode. I don't know why, but just something about the overall tone of this game feels very off. Like, the other Adnetti games have the show's trademark jazzy and bouncy music, but this has some grungy rock music that's more fitting for Beavis and Butthead than the Eds. It also has some really weird cameos from other characters like Billy from Billy and Mandy and Blue from Foster's Home. Alright, fair enough. They're also Cartoon Network shows, so it's not that out of place. But then there's also R2-D2? Not only is Star Wars not owned or even part of the same company as Adnetti, but you're also flat out encouraged to shoot R2-D2. <laughs> As for the game, it's just a basic shoot at the target type scenario that gets progressively more challenging as you win. About it. So, at least these selections of games are a little more interesting to play. 
We now arrive to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, which is the show that I spent the most time playing games for, as it was my favorite on the channel at the time. So, since there's a lot of games, let's do a quick rundown of them. A friend in need has you keeping Blue away from that girl that wanted to adopt him while Mac was away at school. This is one of the more addicting games for me as a kid, and it is pretty easy, which is probably why I liked it so much. Midnight Flight has you collecting food. There's really not much else to say about it. Simply Smashing has you picking up stuff that Duchess drops so that Mr. Harriman doesn't get mad at you, even though he can very clearly see her throwing shit at Frankie, but his uppity rabbit ass instead chooses to shame you for not catching everything. SHUT THE FUCK UP YOU Anyway, the game is fine. Waltz Wash and Swoosh has you making baskets while the soundtrack sounds like something letting out a fart. <laughs> has you pushing cheese down a hill. But if you let go for even a second, he- <coughs> There is no winning or losing in this game, or even points to earn, so I guess there is a game more pointless in its existence than Crazy Buzz after all. <coughs> Teamwork has you stopping some bombs from going off, with some Pac-Man seconds thrown in between, which is just like the episode it's based on, interestingly enough. And if you lose, at least you get this cute little animation of Mac at the end. <coughs> Coco's Egg Scramble has you opening all of Coco's eggs before they fall. It's pretty fun actually, and I really love the soundtrack for it most of all, as its catchy tune keeps you going. <laughs> and finally, we get Cheese Quest, the Brother Lady Saga, which is just as weird as the character it's based on. It starts off with this weird Super Mario Bros. clone segment, but then you ride a pony, and that pony takes you to space, and now you're in Space Invaders, or whatever, and so on I guess. I've never actually beaten it. It's just a bunch of nonsense, but it's really fun and you can tell the developers actually put in some effort with all the little things going on in it. Also, props to Cartoon Network for having LGBT plus representation in a game from 2004. And you guys thought Steven Universe was progressive. Ha. <laughs> wow, Dad! Uh, Dad? <laughs> yes! So that's it for the main three shows I wanted to delve into, but there's still one game in particular that I really want to talk about that isn't based on either of these shows, and that would be... This is a game that isn't on any of Cartoon Network's official websites anymore, so I had to find other means of playing it. It's based on the 2004 The Batman series, as it has you facing off against the Penguin and his goons. Gameplay-wise, it functions very similarly to the Batman Returns games on the... Super Nintendo Sega Genesis! Which is a 2D side-scroller that also has you facing the Penguin and his goons. Now, out of all the games I mentioned, this one had to be my favorite overall as a kid. At the time, I didn't own any Batman games, so it was special as it was the first time I got to control the Cape Crusader. Even now, I still think it's a pretty solid game. The combat and other controls are pretty quick and responsive, the enemies aren't too unforgiving, and the overall difficulty is manageable. also really love the atmosphere of it all. Each level has its own music that nicely complements the environment, from the dark and creepy labs of Gotham, to the industrial steelworks, It all helps to encapsulate the world you're in. But, is it better than the Batman Arkham games is the question. Well, no. Not even close. There's your answer. So yeah, that's about it. Even though most of these games are really just quick time wasters that don't really hold up past a certain demographic, they're not horrible or even bad by any means. They're nice time killers that I actually had fun going back to if only just to relive a small part of my childhood. And from the perspective of a child, they were a great way to sort of expand on your enjoyment of the show. Almost like a bonus for being a fan. Like, hey, you like these characters in the world they inhabit and wish there was a way to interact with it? Well, here's a way to do just that. They may not be the most immersive experiences out there, but they were something, and that's all that really matters in the end. 